all network traffic is not created equal. The goal of quality of service is to empower you with the ability to prioritize some traffic above others. And that's my hope for this micro nugget is to show you the tools that you have at your disposal. So when the time comes, you can pull them out and use them in your network environment. If you open somebody's toolbox, you'll often find multiple tools that have the same goal, but accomplish it differently. A jigsaw, table saw, and hacksaw all do the goal of cutting something, but might approach it a little different. In the same way, all these are quality of service categories. They all have the same goal. They may just approach it differently. Let me explain. At the core of quality of service is classification, the ability to identify different traffic types so that you can properly prioritize one over the other. Traditionally, voice over IP is much more important than somebody surfing the web. Classification allows me to use a tool like an access control list or network-based application recognition to catch the data coming into this router and say, oh, that's VoIP. Oh, that's YouTube surfing. Uh, not that that's bad. And then prioritize one above the other. Marking is actually one of the optional phases of quality of service. What it involves is tagging the packet as it comes in. It says, OK, well, voice over IP, I'm going to color you blue so that all the routers in the future can recognize that that is a voice over IP packet without using a deep packet inspection like these guys, which could cost you some processor cycles. Marking tools might include a class of service, which allows switches to see what's going on, or type of service, which is something that routers use at layer three in the header to be able to identify traffic. Policing is your only anti-quality of service tool, the one that takes away bandwidth. You know, those peer-to-peer -peer file sharing applications. True story, a friend of mine worked at a college university and it completely blocked peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, and the students sued the campus for freedom of speech and won. Welcome to America, right? So he had to allow peer-to-peer -peer file sharing because it's a freedom of speech issue, but he throttled it down to such a low amount that it became virtually useless anyway, using some pretty awesome policing tools. Policing allows you to set an upper limit, say something crazy like 10 kilobits per second. Uh, and when traffic hits that amount, it cuts it off and says you will be dropped as you go above that. Shaping, on the other hand, allows you to have a kinder, gentler version. This is for traffic that we care about because there's oftentimes uh, moments where our physical rate that our interface can send at, let's say it's 100 megabits per second, is a lot faster than the amount that our service router allows us to transmit at, which we'll say is 20 megabits per second. If I use shaping, what it allows me to do is to throttle this down, but cue the excess traffic, meaning hold it in memory and try to transmit it at a later time, whereas policing is like, you're cut off, buddy. So shaping a lot of times is used in things like frame relay or, you know, in, essentially any kind of network where your physical line rate uh, does not match what the service writer allows you to send at. Congestion avoidance tools are awesome. Things like random early detection or weighted random early detection allows a little sniper to step out onto the scene. Here's kind of the analogy is TCP traffic builds itself up. If you've heard of TCP windowing, when you first try and send some data with a computer, it starts small and builds up and up and up and up and, and tries to send a whole bunch of packets at a time, consuming as much bandwidth as it possibly can. Well, congestion avoidance, get the term, avoids congestion in the first place, said as things build up to a certain threshold, the router's like, oh man, we've got to slow this guy down before he completely consumes our entire uh, bandwidth amount. So a little sniper comes out and starts shooting random packets. That's why they call them random early detection tools. Random packets in that stream, because as soon as TCP starts realizing it's dropping packets, goes Ooh, and shrinks that window size down and automatically slows that guy down before he starts consuming all the bandwidth. Way cool stuff there. But real power comes in in the queuing. This is what most people think about when they think about quality of service. Queuing says this packet is actually more important than that packet. Move it to the front of the line. So here's your voice, here's your data. And inside the queue, meaning as these, these packets are waiting in line to be transmitted, the router can shuffle them around to put the most important traffic first. A lot of common queuing tools include low latency queuing. That's the powerhouse uh, tool that kind of encompasses all of them. But you also have class-based weighted fair queuing. Uh, you have uh, old school methods like priority queuing or custom queuing. I mean, there's a lot of queuing tools that are out there, each one with their own slant. Again, multiple tools in the toolbox with the same goal, but approaching it differently. 
Now we call them micro nuggets because we like to keep them nice and short. So if you want to hear more about any one of those tools, feel free to leave it in the comment box below and I'll try and create a micro nugget dedicated to just that tool for now. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.